college in our first play in matches. Best of three about to get started. And we already are in that pick and bands. These teams are ready to get going, but we are now in the play in stage in the group A. So that comprises of Maryland, Georgia College, Simon Fraser, and Ottawa. All these four teams vying for two spots in those finals. It all starts right here, right now. Exactly, and we get to watch the winner of the Big Ten taking on the winner of the Peach Belt. So, we haven't really got to see how these two teams are vetted just yet against all these other collegiate leagues. The Maryland pulling up an upset against Illinois, finding themselves here now. They look to make a statement. Yeah, exactly. I mean, Maryland is just on absolute roll. This is the second year in a row they've taken the number one spot in the Big Ten. In this year, if you looked at their regular season performance, they were middle of the pack for the region. No one expected them to take this entire championship, but hell, they made it happen again. They got the playoff buffs. Let's hope it keeps on going for them. Yeah, but we've gotten ourselves into the big and bands like you already mentioned return. We're seeing a couple that really are standing out to me. Aurelia and Kaisa. Kaisa's so powerful right now. Not too surprised to see it taken away, but... Then Ziggs following in after that is definitely an interesting pickup to go for bands from Maryland. Yeah, but what you do have to keep in mind here is that uh, Georgia College is actually from the Peach Belt Conference. It's a conference that is very well known for pulling out some a, bit, a few randomish picks. They like their own champion performance. And hell right there, dear, is not a pick we would normally expect in a competitive setting. First pick as well. Not even just waiting confidence. until the end. This that man is, is confident. Call. That's yeah, very interesting. I Now, see, that gets me wondering, is this actually going to be into the jungle role, or are we going to see it flexed up into the top lane? You talk about comfort, you never know with that kind of thing. The Caitlyn and Morgana bot lane, so powerful, does not surprise me yeah. at all to see that drafted so quickly by Maryland. Yeah, a few patches ago, the Zyra Khan was all the rage. Now, Caitlyn Morgana is the bee's knees. This is a lane that will just consistently push for you, and it's so incredibly hard to gank them. Between the Black Shield, between the W from Morgana, and just the sheer pushing power and range from Caitlyn, you basically need to either put three to four people down in this bottom lane if you're Georgia, if you want to shut this duo down, or just go somewhere else. Or you go really, really fast. That seems to be the yes. idea coming in from Georgia. Zillion locked in. Going to move that Udyr so much quicker. Mm -hmm. Almost wonder if we're going to start seeing other things kind of fill it up. Oh, the Karma was the other thing, but White saying, no, no, no. I'm taking that away from you. Yeah, the Karma is like the one support pick that can really start fighting back against the Kaelin Morgana. Morgana puts down the Tormented Soil. Karma just throws a Mantra Q at the wave, and usually you get some pretty even wave pushing ability. But now that it's an Ezreal locked in on the side of Georgia, that does signal to me maybe a bit more of a Rome style coming out of Georgia. They free up their bottom lane, the Ezreal, to be in that 2v1 situation to give him time to uh, handle that down there. Now maybe they are going to look to roam over on the mid lane, roam over on the top lane, because there's certainly ways to beat the team that has Caitlyn Morgana. Just basically go around them. Exactly. A lot of top lane focus coming in. Now that we're into the second phase of bands, trying to hit at that, so maybe making it a little easier so they can go for the roams later on. Mm. Don't have to worry about Cho'Gath, Scion as well, Nanar oh, gone off the table, and same Camille with well. Camille. So that leaves open just a couple more picks. I mean, hell, we could see Jax coming in with Conqueror. He's been very strong with that Keystone into the top side of the map, but it's really interesting. I almost wonder if we're going to have really standard top laners in just tanks such as Shen and Maokai coming in. Yeah, about to say, we have not seen the Shen or the Maokai in quite a while because of how many top lane options there are. But right now, I'm counting about four, eight, five, six, even if you want to count it, bands directly. Forget that. It's actually like seven, eight, uh, depending <laughs> on how you look at it. Bands just to that top lane and Volibear. Volibear plus Udyr. This team goes fast. So that is going to be most likely Volibear into the top lane. I'd have to imagine that Udyr has a little bit more of a difficult time into that lane. And then Brand okay. coming in. So are we going to see the Brand support or are we going to see the Zillion support? I think it's going to be the Brand support just because you're looking for something that's going to be able to maybe not out shove, but at least contest Caitlyn and Morgana. Karma's already taken away. Why not go all in with the Brand? This is true. I've... Cannot say that you're wrong in that. I would definitely <laughs> want to go for that. I love my brand support personally, but I mean, that's my games compared mm -hmm. to some of these competitive ones. And it's finally like the last walk-in will be Renekton into the top lane. This okay. is something I don't see too often. I mean, no, he's been resurging a little bit in 8.7, but definitely an interesting pick going up against Volibear. Yeah, the problem is that Renekton really does 
rely on a great early game. That's why you see people like the sign, like the Cho'Gath go into him, just because you can out-poke him and out-sustain him in the laning phase. Renekton can't really start beating you down up there, but now that all of those champions have been, been banned out of the way, Renekton's probably the next most meta thing available. You get pressed the attack, your W procs three auto attacks in a row when you have enough rage. You just trade for so ungodly much, and now combining that with the Rengar, even with Morgana Shield, this is a great backline early game fighting composition coming up for Maryland. And that's the thing. It's a very early game focused yes. composition because if you look at that lineup, well, yes, they have a lot of potential to go into the back line, dive them, assassinate them pretty quickly. If there's a chance for Georgia, it is the fact that they can at least go a little bit longer. Udyr's going to get pretty tanky. Yeah. Same with Volibear. So they actually have a... Even though it's weird to say, they have a more standard front-to-back composition <laughs> than that of Maryland. And it's hard to say that when you have Brand support Zillion mid and then Udyr coming into the jungle. You know, let's just say there's definitely a few oddities coming up from the Georgia composition. But with how deep especially the top lane banning pool is, it's not that shocking to see uh, some of these other picks coming out. Sure, Volibear probably wasn't really on the top of anyone's list. Uh, but you have a very good point in that... If the duo of Volibear plus Udyr, especially with Zillion on the backside, is tanky enough to sustain through the initial engage from Renekton and the initial engage from Rengar, you can very reliably fight on back. This is definitely going to be waiting a little bit more towards that mid game when Volibear and Udyr are finally beefy enough to actually make something happen, plus Ezreal has items to go damage against them. But if they keep this gold lead maybe like 2k against them, no more, no real more than that, because at that point you get too much of a snowball. But if they keep it in that sweet spot, there's no reason they can't fight back through the mid game. And that's going to be the big thing for Georgia is holding on for dear life. I mean, they're going to be able to generate a decent amount of gold, especially from Ezreal, as long as he's getting a lot of the arcane shifts with the mystic shots landing onto Alrighty. He'll mm -hmm. probably be able to hold his own pretty effectively into this lane definitely the biggest thing for me has to be the Ezreal plus Brand has such a higher high and a lower low, lower low rather than the Caitlyn and Morgana lane. Caitlyn Morgana, you rely on very consistent, very reliable wave clear in the uh, Q coming out from Caitlyn plus the Tormented Soils coming out of Morgana. It's, you, you just have to pop it on the wave and basically forget about it. Whereas Brand plus Ezreal, if they overstep by just a little bit, get ganked by Rengar one too many times, that lane can snowball out of control the wrong way. And Brand especially is a champion that needs that early game lead to be relevant in the mid game. Yeah, but before we get into our game return, let's do a couple of little plugs so that everyone knows about us. You can always type in exclamation point discord into the chat if you want to be able to join and talk with us about anything collegiate so you can get in and have some fun conversations there. Also, make sure to follow us on Twitter if you want to. It's going to be C-Star League if you want all things collegiate. Or if you just want League of Legends content, it's going to be CSL LOL. You can also go on to Facebook and find us at C-Star League if you want to make sure to keep up to date that way as well. Yeah, and with that, this looks like we're just a few short seconds away from getting into this first game of Maryland versus Georgia College. To remind you guys once more, we are in that play-in stage. There are only two spots available out of this group of four. Uh, in Group A here with Maryland, Georgia College, Simon Fraser, and Ottawa. And it's only a single round robin best of three. A yep. single game loss could just mean the end of your season. I'd say that this has to be one of the most difficult groups, if you ask me. Just looking at it, Simon yeah. Fraser, the team that was able to take the number one for the West last year, mm -hmm. and then getting defeated by UCI this year, finding themselves here. But then Ottawa as well, they were the number two seed throughout entire play in the uh, pool play before yeah so they're a very powerful team maryland if they really want to step up and show that the big 10 league is something to fear in the future they have to make sure that they get out of this group yeah exactly and a, a huge part with the big 10 is that they haven't had the most historical success uh with the last few years last year not a single big 10 team made it to the la finals this year so maryville Maryland, rather, and Illinois both making the, those pushes for it. But you also have the issue where the Big Ten is a very small region, just considerably. Like, the North, the South, the East, and the West each have about 300-plus teams in them. You really do get the best of the best coming out of that group. Like, Columbia College, Maryville from the North, uh, Simon Fraser UCI from the uh, West, and just each one of these groups, you have so much competition that it only allows the best of the best to come through. And you have to wonder... Where does the Big Ten really stack up with that? Sure, we've seen some great performances so far, but this is the big stage. Exactly, and so this is where we want to see Maryland prove themselves. Why? 
they were able to take the Big Ten Network before. Why they are the ones that we get to see here over Illinois. But they have to make sure that they're proving themselves. They can't get a little bit too comfort, a little bit easy for wear against the Peach Belt because this is where all games matter. You might think that it's a best of three, but you yeah. drop a single game, you can forfeit a potential tiebreaker later on just because of one game result. Especially if the group goes how kind of everyone's expecting to with uh, the Peach Belt Conference almost basically losing out across the board, you are very likely to have a two-way tie for second place with a 2-1 match record. You need each and every game because it's going to be the worst feeling in the world if you make it to the very end of this entire conference, the very end of the group, and it's like, oh, sorry, you dropped one game, so you're not making it through, but we are loading in to the rift for our first match here. First matchup for our best of three, University of Maryland taking on Georgia College. Let us know who you are rooting for in the chat. The teams have loaded up, making their way down the rift. So far, nothing too crazy coming out of the build. We do see the mini dematerializers in both the mid lane, and this is a bit of a different one. I haven't seen the mini dematerializers on the Ezreal in quite some time, but it definitely was a bit of a flavor of the month thing. Some ADCs like to pick up the mini dematerializers, especially against these shoving lanes, just so they can stay competitive. But Ezreal, really not somebody who's going to be able to keep up in the wave clear anyway. He's going to need the support from Greeny. Exactly. So I do find that very, very interesting right along with you on that one. Has to be more of a statement of the thought process coming in for Georgia. Trying to see if mm -hmm. they can keep up a little bit with already in Quirk. They don't want to fall too fine, far behind in gold, but almost indicates that they expect to fall behind in gold in the early stages of the game, which is not a great way to go into this series. No, most certainly not. You want to make sure that you're staying competitive at all points. Because a team like Maryland, if you saw how competitive they were, how dominant they were in those finals versus Illinois, if you give them even one advantage, they will just take it and snowball off it. Especially in a competition like this. Ooh, maybe a little bit of an invade here. The possibility of a little bit of damage. Seems like Greeny is the one who comes out a little bit successful. So he's able to land the W onto both Alrighty and Quark. Got the spell, these Frox. He's already making that sick money. But how well can he actually keep that one going on through? That being said, though, top side, we do have both junglers starting up on the top portion of the map, but definitely different clears being taken by both. It's interesting looking at Jungalong, probably looking to see if he can make it. A game Ooh. later into the game, want to get level 6, which maybe for Udi are not going to be the most beneficial thing. Usually wants to help out some of these lanes, especially since he has Predator. Maybe he needs those boots if he wants to feel that he can successfully gank early on. The classic farm deer. There's the great thing about Udir and the jungler, there are so many ways to play him. I mean, if you're a Trick 2G fan, there's certainly the open the gate split push style. There's also the more farmed up tankier utility style, given that there's already so much damage uh, available on the side. George, uh, but almighty. He yeah, put down some hella teams. damage. So much poke from that. He's got to be careful. One good headshot with a Dark Binding following suit, he will give first blood so quickly to Maryland. Doc about not wanting to fall behind in any of these lanes, not wanting to fall behind more than 2,000 gold. To do it, but here comes Weezy. Chang! On a Jungalong. It's gonna be a 1v1 duel, but you can't battle the Rengar early on. First blood for Maryland. Yeah, even on top of that, it felt like Chunglong didn't even notice the Rengar until he walked through that buff, uh, through that bush rather. And at that point, it's already too late to flash forward. Flash forward, but the tower was being tanked by White a little bit too far forward. Got to be a little bit more careful as top lane. Seems like there's a little bit more dueling coming back and forth. But a lot of these lanes are under threat for Georgia. Weezy Easy. looking like he wants to go for a dive. Flashing forward with the Bola. Picks up a second kill for Rengar. Doesn't even need to land the second Bola. It's only zoning, but top lane. Top lane. He looks like Dukar was doing a pretty good job at battling with Yang. Even flipping him under the tower, but he is falling a little bit behind the CS Oof. game in Maryland. They're putting on the pressure. We're not even four minutes into the game, and it's already looking pretty havoc on the rift. Every single lane for Maryland has a considerable CS lead at this point. 14-21, the top of the chunk. He's looking to turn this around. Wants to see if he can get anything. He has the Predator boots. I don't think that Yang can get out yeah. of there. So that's going to be nice for Georgia. They pick up some gold under their belts and they get this top lane at least a little bit ahead. Yeah, but that was incredibly important to pick up the kill right there because Yang just teleported back in the lane. This extra time is going to allow Duck and Duckar to catch up in the CS game. He also has the teleport available. So if he wants to push this lane out back, 
either TP in or TP to a play. There's a considerable amount of advantage and pressure on this map in Georgia. I could go with any turn around. Oh, oh, but look at that. Cork already picks up the kill on Z Lord. Even throws it around for Alrighty to get a kill. And now top lane. Here comes Weezy jumping in on a Jakar. Look at the damage coming in with just the Tiamat and the longsword. Weezy, he's not done. He feels so empowered, but he's got to be careful. Here comes Udyr flashing forward. Needs to get a little bit more damage, but is Yang going to get in time to help out so his fast. Juggler? Not in time at all. As Jung has to run away with the kill, he's going to be very happy for that. Yeah, certainly some very uncharacteristic of Maryland over aggressions, especially in that top lane. Because now that's one kill onto Dakar, one kill onto Chang. But mid lane, mid -lane too much. John was taking a little bit of poke, but he was pretty safe. No mantra Q just yet for White. Probably just a couple of seconds away, and then it's going to be able to happen. But if Jung's able to get here in time, he's going to be able to keep Zillion alive. But that's the mantra Q that we wanted to see out of White. Even Jung realizes he can't fight with this Karma anymore. Yeah, no, that was just great presence of mind from White to make sure, like, he just looked at the other side, saw Emperor John continuing the push, and says, have a mantra Q to the face. Wipes that one up completely, and this is just consistent dominance out of Maryland. Good juke there. Good Jew coming in from Alrighty, dodging away from the Q from a brand. Had that landed, getting the full passive stacked up. Would have been a good amount of poke, but I doubt he would have died just yet. Yeah, not quite, but the pressure for sure is still there. As we were talking about before, definitely top lane is coming back a little bit in this CS game, especially because of that early teleport forced out by Wheezy. Already on the bottom side of the map again. Don't think Dealer is really going to get into range. Uh, for them to pull that play offer, maybe maybe he will. I don't know that's it's kind of one of those worrying trends we've already been seeing. The spot lane stepping Ooh. a little bit too far forward. Maybe they feel empowered with the amount of damage they just put on to already. But Weezy, seeing that he's wasted a bit too much time, doesn't want some of these wards to time out. <laughs> oh, okay. If he doesn't back instead, just jumps off here to a minion and Greeny. One more shot from a headshot would be able to pick up the kill, but just out of range was already. No, but once again, that's going to be the heal burned once more by the Georgia ball lane. And this is still just advantage after advantage being blown. Sure, this composition on the side of Georgia is built to go a little bit behind. Obviously, when you have the brand, that's never the most ideal situation in the world, but it's manageable. But this is already that nearly 2k allowance I gave them at the start of the game. And we're only seven minutes in. Yeah, return. That's not voting well at all. Maybe the headshot comes in. It's gonna be a kill picked up by Alrighty. Dealer wanted to oh, see no. the run, but the dark finding lands. One more auto double kills for Caitlyn. Everything is just going wrong, and Georgia might be just falling back on the only lane they can get ahead this top lane. Those are still two fast members right there. Very fast, but even with the Predator, cannot get on to the Lizard Man. He's taunting them under the tower. Dragon was already picked up by Wheezy all the while. Ooh. Stealing away some of these chickens just to get a little bit more taunt on the Chung. Yeah, Chung, uh, showing a little bit of courtesy, just giving him the good old penguin hat tip, but, uh, even so, his lanes are just in so much disarray. The vision game also is fairly on point, but he's back to the top lane. Back to top lane, but here comes the dominance, trying to see if he can stay alive for a little bit longer. He's back under tower. He's gotten Ooh. the stun, so he returns it around. Might have lost his own life, but that's a good one for one trade. And here comes Weezy trying oh. to see if he can snipe out Greeny. Easy peasy. Yeah, unfortunately, when you are a brand, you're either killing everyone you see or dying to everyone you see. And unfortunately, right now, the Georgia support is feeling a lot more of that ladder, not able to go up against anybody in this game. And Weezy, already with three kills to his name, just could full control right now of this jungle, especially with how much Jung is spending on this top side. And you gotta think, even if you get this Volibear as many kills in the world as you can, he's not going to be the main force to carry this game. Not at all. I mean, look at the CS differentials on the bottom side of this map. That's a 40 CS lead for Alrighty in, on this Caitlyn over Ezreal. And we're only nine minutes into the game right now, Return. Yeah, this is this is just getting more and more brutal by the minute. If you're looking for the mid to late game scaling from Georgia, you gotta find some way to control the early game. But bot lane, they still have three members here from Georgia and they're still gonna lose the tower. I don't think they could even fight up. That's a two level advantage over the 80 carries just for Maryland alone. And had Chung gone in, I doubt that it would have saved the tower. Maybe get a kill, but that's 
kind of hoping for the best at that point. Exactly. The damage has basically already been done, but Maryland, they're not actually going to swap lanes. The dragon is not up. They did get that first mount Drake earlier on in the game, but oh, there's another binding. Headshot with the dark binding landing first. There's no way to escape for poor Greeny. And that's another kill, another chunk of gold. We're sitting 5,000 gold for Maryland over Georgia, and we haven't crested that 10 minute mark just yet. This Kaelin plus Morgana lane is absolutely insane in the amount of plays you can actually pull off, but oh. ace in the hole. Yeah, ace in the hole, but top lane. TB. Seems like Yang is going to be fighting a little bit. 1v2 tries to flash away, but the chomp comes down. The killing spree for Dakar. So you mentioned before, there is a possibility that they can win with the top side of the map. But at this point, it is 5k. I know, 5k, and I'm pretty sure we can check the gold and... About half of that is just on to alrighty. Yeah, basically so, but Quirk. Quirk going in. He flashed Ooh. forward. He wanted to get the shoal shackles, but that was a pretty good outplay coming in from Greedy. Keep himself <laughs> open. He stepped on the track. Oh, no. 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 <laughs> Why, Greedy? Why? That is most unfortunate, but the six kill Kaylin at the moment alrighty with. Look at the gold, look at the CS differential, 37 to 104. He is almost flame horizoning the enemy ADC at 10 minutes, 40 seconds. Maryland cannot be stopped right now. Not they can do it. any play they want. That's the problem coming in, because you have Jakar, who's doing pretty good on this Vola Baron. That's the shining light for them at the moment. Mid lane falling heavily behind for white. Look at the CS differences there. We haven't even seen too many kills coming in from that lane. That's the fact that this Karma keeps shoving in the zillion that, that makes it so vital. And then Quirk with the boots of mobility pick up really early on. He's been able to roam into the mid lane if he ever needs to. Roam all throughout the jungle of Chung. So there's no way to control the bottom side of the map for Georgia. Oh, another engage. Yeah, he jumps on what in the world? Goodbye. Yeah, that's what? a that's a four kill Rengar, by the way. Already with a dust play completed, he is going to do damage. And now they're looking for Dakar himself. Looking to see if he can get on them, but there is a little bit of armor picked up by Dakar. He's got the ninja tabbies, the chain vest as well. So probably a little bit harder to assassinate Bin Chiang going for the very greedy late game build that he's got so far on this Udyr. Yeah, um, even with all that considered, it's still just, I, I don't know what you can do at this point if you are Georgia. So the problem was in the early game, not a single lane was granting them pressure, which means there was nothing to keep Quirk down in that bottom lane. There's nothing to keep White from just shoving that lane out consistently. And now once again, they try to make a play here onto the top side, but all right, all righty and Quirk, they are not even phased. They're not even relenting the pressure. They don't feel threatened at all. Look at that damage coming in from Alrighty, raining it down on Chiang. Not even needing the ace in the hole to finish forward with that one. So pushing it forward a little bit. Three on one. Now on the top side, Emperor does appear as well. But, I mean, look at mid lane too. This is almost a 10k gold lead. 10k gold lead at 13 minutes into the game is not something to sneeze at as Yang goes on the aggression on a D-Lord and Greeny in the bot lane. He's just trying to delay, gets stunned up. He's got dominance, but the true shot barrage misses. Same with the missing shot, but the burn from Brand finally finishes off the crocodile, roasting him alive. It doesn't matter because his team's picking up objectives all across Ooh, Black the map. Shield. Even looking to see if they can get onto Dakar. The passive buff that Ignite to stop a little bit of the healing. He's still got a little bit more in the tank, but the shot enough? finally comes in. And Chung, he wants to see if he can turn onto Quirk, but here's White on the other side. John doing his best to try to keep him alive. Finally, Quirk will not survive. It's going to be a couple kills traded back over by Maryland, but I think they're going to be quite happy as they take down this tier two in the top lane. Yeah, they may be about 10k in the lead at this moment. They may be about to get yet another tower, but they have to keep in mind that this game is not over just yet. That being said, as long as basically they bring even numbers to a fight, it's basically impossible for them to lose. So far, this has been a great job in the early game coming out of Georgia to keep Yang in the top lane under control. You don't have to worry about the Renekton going down and killing absolutely everyone in sight. Unfortunately, everyone else in the team has not been kept down to that same extent, and that's just showing potentially the laning issues you get out of the uh, Peach Belt Conference. Ooh. I, I, I'm not even going to comment on yeah, that. Yeah, either way. 
uh, green screen <laughs> dies, shockingly enough. Uh, push, good pushing game coming out of the top lane, but ooh, look here, we do have a little bit of a gank. Alrighty. I think that's 10, but he's onto the traps. Headshot's coming down. Chung, you've gone for the late game build. You don't have any armor, so you're getting shredded apart. But finally, and thankfully, John is there to see, keep his jungler alive and get a shutdown kill onto Alrighty. Yeah, this is just greedy play coming out of Maryland. They don't respect this Georgia team right now, so they're trying each and every cheat play that they can find in their playbook. That being said, once again, 10k gold lead. They're usually going to work one way or another, and uh, if you're Georgia, you basically have to already look forward to game number two. What do you want to do? What do you want to change? I already guarantee you that Kalen Morgana bot lane cannot be allowed to get through. It is just too incredibly dominant, and you don't have the correct answer to it. Maybe the answer is playing around that top lane, but Wesley, he's going to look for another kill. BG jumps in. Greeny doesn't get bursted down this time around. He'll survive. But I'm pretty God. sure that was only like an alt and one auto attack on top of that. That was insane damage. I think so as well. Here's the aggression on the gang, but here comes Cork to keep him alive. Teleport by White into the back lane. Goes to Car, but Cork is able to get the kill on Ezreal. Trying to turn it around onto White. But that's a lot of poke damage coming in from both Karma and from Morgana. The heal to give the bear a little bit more health to survive. But it's the killing spree from White to end the dreams of Udyr. As they keep the chase, keep the pressure, have to back up. And there's still the two split pushers. This is absurd, Return. This is what you expect coming in from Maryland, though. This is what you want to see them putting this kind of performance. While, sure, at times it's been greedy, they've been showing why they are the team that were able to take the Big Ten. Exactly, and I mean, even coming into this, to be completely honest, this is the kind of game we were expecting. Peach Bell Conference has been taking a lot of flack this year just from the quality of the teams. Certainly a lot of improvement experience here is going to be required. No one really expects them to come off like this, but there is still the rest of this play-in stage to go. There are things you can learn from this game number one, and it always feels good to kind of play that spoiler, knock off a few teams, but uh, right now they've got to definitely change something here. Teleport comes in. We could be seeing a 4-on-4. Four four. Could be a 4-on-4. Four four. They don't have Weezy just yet. He's going for the Rift Herald. Maryland want to buy the time so he can finish that off so they can try to crack open this base before 20 But they jump onto dealer instead black shield to deny the rolling thunder But the chop can't be denied instead greeny has to trade his life helping out his team the rampage for white he Wasn't doing too much earlier into the game, but now that the teams have grouped up He's been picking up the snipes with the mantra Q yeah, that's going to be the Herald going down as well. No inhibitors have fallen for Georgia just yet in the game, and they always have the scaling potential. But right now, it's just not looking too good for them. And it looks like the first inhibitor of the game, at least the first inhibitor tower, should be going down here quite quickly. If you're Georgia, you just got to find the quick engage. Find your way onto Alrighty and just buy more time with it. So they might actually be looking directly into white. By the car, here comes Chung, try to deny the flash of the wall, but with the bomb, the shield, is it going to help out White? It will. He's that much further ahead of his opponent. Even going for the first, like, second item, Ardent Sensor, after completing the Seraph's Embrace, he's doing very well for himself, even wanting to empower his very fed Caitlyn. Exactly. Now that Caitlyn basically has two support with her at all times. White with an insane amount of shielding, having the iron sensor as well, and then having Quirk on the Morgana with that black shield and more CC to help Kite. Basically, if you five men on already, you just don't have any chance of taking him down, unlike Wezzy there in the top lane, who's very easily just able to like look at somebody at this point and they're dead. Yeah, that's why I didn't even want to interrupt you. I'm like, we know, we both know what's going on right now. We have seen we this both. before. Exactly. About five times. Yeah, <laughs> five times to be exact. This game is going to be absolute massacre, look, but... Look at honestly, the ADC gold right now. Oh, 4.7 to 10.5. This is the story of the game. Already is not only doubling the CS coming out, uh, not only doubling Delor CS, almost getting the uh, Flame Horizon, he is double the gold, and Gage comes in here. Here comes the engage. It's going to be a full 5v5, but they already take away the brand, making it so it's quickly going to be for Maryland. They're confident. They even have the Rift Herald if they want. Look at top lane. Weezy the whole time pushing in the tower so they can lay down the Rift Herald, go for the push, take even more objectives with the fight still happening in the base. 
Georgia, you don't have any way to fight back. You already lost Bola Bear. The resurrection not gonna help too much when Weezy goes into the back line it's and the destroys ace. everybody. Ace coming down for Maryland, even with the Rift Herald taking down the second inhibitor of the game. Green screen comes back. You want to see if he can play. The final hope. Help anything, but here comes Weezy to deny oh. that. That's gonna be the passive. Does it pick up the kill? No. The shields help out. Maryland take a dominating game one over Georgia State. Gonna end it before the 20 minute mark. With the Dancing Herald as well, Maryland, sure, there was one or two times that game where they definitely overstayed, toppling with a very lackluster performance in this match, especially not really respecting the fact that he was so far behind on the Renekton pick. But everything else for Maryland, basically when it's planned, and probably even better than planned, you never expect to end the game at the 19 minute mark. That's exactly what they did. Maybe most people don't expect it, but you can tell Maryland with the composition that they drafted, they expected that game to get out of control so quickly. Renekton, Rengar, bot lane of Caitlyn Morgana, all the while you have a very hard shoving mid laner of Karma. That was Maryland making a statement into this play and saying, we are going to be a dominant team. Do not deny and do not take us for granted, even though we come from the Big Ten. Exactly. And uh, even going off of that, you just looked at the uh, initial picks coming up from Maryland. They first rotation the Morgana plus Caitlyn, and then they doubled down on that early game team composition. And Georgia basically said, all right, you can have the early game will scale to late game, but they need to find that bridge between the early game and the late game. Because that, ga that game just stayed in the early game, and Maryland just won that game entirely throughout. There was not a single member, not even the Volleybear top lane, uh, who's just rolling away with basically all of the kills on that match, who was able to do anything against any member. A lot of macro mistakes and a lot of micro mistakes, especially in that bottom lane, really need to be sorted out if Georgia want to come back in this series. And that's what I was going to ask you before we throw it over to a break, is what can we expect the changes to come in from Georgia State? Because... Definitely that bot lane needs yeah. to have some mixing Anything. up. I don't want to really see the Ezreal. The brand wasn't too bad, but they need something that can keep up with mm -hmm. Caitlyn Morgana if they're just going to give that over to f for free to Maryland. The bigger thing for me wasn't quite the picks themselves. It was the combination. What you give with Ezreal is you get a very safe laning phase that has a very reliable spike. You go for the two items, and you're doing pretty well. Certainly, you can scale a little bit more, but you're not the hyper carry. You're not the early game carry. You're just a safe carry, especially once right. you get that early tier. But then they paired it with the brand who wants to go hard aggro in the lane. And at that point, I'd almost rather just see like a Jin plus a brand lane if you're going to try to win that outright. If you want to use the Ezreal for the Ezreal purposes... Let him be Ezreal and then give your support like an Alistar, something you can roam around and affect the rest of the map on. But Bran stayed in that lane, was unable to get anything done by himself in practically a 2v1 lane, and then just didn't do anything. Yeah, it was definitely a little bit of a mixed match when it came to the composition from Georgia. Hopefully they can shore up some of those weaknesses going into game two. Maybe we can see the upset coming in from them take down Maryland, because Maryland did play a little bit greedy at times. We're going to find out in just a little bit. We're going to throw it over to a break before we get ready for game two between the University of Maryland and Georgia College. Just stick around and we'll be right back. 